Let's look at the Smart Cities Megatrend. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. Let's first, you know, get the big picture of the megatrends. So you can see here that, you know, as far as the S&P 500, there is some pretty significant outperformance. Uh, but as you can also see, there's been some sizable corrections here in some of these uh, themes. Uh, and um, something we just have to respect is that there are many bubbles out there. Uh, the problem uh, now is that there are bubbles across the asset classes. You know, you have it all over the place. So definitely you want to be market neutral. Uh, here is the Smart Cities Megatrend theme. Very, very, very strong performance. Uh, not, you know, too shabby vis a vis 52-week highs either. We will look at e-tron in this uh, video they are in i call it just smart cities that is what uh what they do which is you know a very powerful theme for sure here is their website so innovation to drive the industry forward energy water and city services are essential and critical during crisis we will emerge from uh covid lania covid lania uh, I, I mean, as you probably know i cannot say this uh because you no know, uh, the machine intelligence doesn't like these terms, but uh, Kuvilania uh, uh, stronger. The renewed focus on innovation, resiliency, and sustainability to better serve our customers and communities. It's pretty ridiculous that you cannot say words anymore, though. I can't say this either. So Kuvilania, Palacia, yeah. Okay. Uh, so who we serve? Uh, combining experience and innovation to deliver results. Our proven portfolio of smart networks, software services, meters, and sensors help our customers better manage energy and water for the people they serve. So City of Paris Air, ComEd, the Smart Public Networks, Con Edison, so how we help. So uh, yeah. So basically, like they have like you know a relatively broad exposure to this whole smart cities mega trend. Very very interesting company. Let's look at the seasonality of the stock, like this, 20 years. ETRI is the ticker. Okay, so what we can see is that March is, um, it is one of the strong, well, it is the strongest month actually, as far as you know, the percentage of months in which it closes higher than it opened. So we are in a strong season for Etron. Uh, as far as the percentage gains goes, which you can see here, April actually tends to be stronger than March, but that is actually good no good news potentially for us because April is around the corner. Um, yeah, very interesting seasonality. So let's look at the charts like this. Uh, weekly data points, and let's you know, zoom way back to really get. Uh, get to know the personality of the stock, which is something I'm a very huge fan of. What I can see immediately here is that this stock, it certainly moves in these um, cycle patterns. So let's see whether there are some repeating uh, cycles. You could make the case that there are, there are some large cycles, and within you know the large cycles, you usually have two smaller cycles. So the definitive, definitively some interesting cyclicality here. So let's actually just drop in this cycle like that. And I think we also found a bit of a larger cycle within the smaller ones. Uh, something around here. So I think you can see yourself that there is, there is, there is this cyclical rhythm to the stock. Interesting, but that also means that this stock it does like to have a pullback. Uh, every now and then, you like here, it looks innocent, but it isn't. Uh, this is, you know, minus 44% plunge all of a sudden. And this was not, you know, related uh, to uh, C or anything else. This was just, uh, it decided to have a pullback. And this, of course, is, you know, the big crash due to the lockdown. Recovered very quickly. Now it is a bit um, in a pullback mode again. So that is something we have to respect. It is definitely one of those where you want to let the trend be your friend. Um, what I do find particularly interesting now is that you do have this potential support. So first, let's get the correlation. We don't want to look at the correlation with the gold. 
we want to look at correlation here with the S and P 500 like this, the spy. So then we have 80% strong correlation long term. But as you can see, because this stock moves in these major cycle patterns, there have been times where the correl correlation has been negative actually multiple times actually. Yeah. Looking here at the daily data points. Okay. So you can see here, this is you now the blue 100 day moving average. Boom, surgical test, uh, a major rally. Um, here it is, you know, a clear resistance uh, level. Then it becomes support, surgical support. So it, it, it is actually more surgical as a support level than resistance. Here, pullback, surgical support from the 100 day moving average, surgical again, okay. Hence, you could make a very strong case that for some reason, the 100 day moving average is a big deal for iTron. Do I know why it's a big deal? Not really sure, but the facts are here right in front of us. It is too surgical for this to just be random. So yeah, it's a big deal. As long as the 100 day holds, I would be speculatively bullish for iTron. Um, looking here at accumulation distribution, it's there's some very healthy buying here. This is this is this there's an inflow of money very interesting rsi is in a low level where buyers tend to show up the only caveat i would have on the technicals here uh you do have a 91 percent positive correlation with the s p 500 that is strong um and given that the s p hasn't had a, had a real correction in some time i don't i'm not a huge fan of the strong correlation uh, then again, also, you do have this very clear cyclical nature here of Itron. It Every now and then, it does have these big pullbacks. But so far, I think that we need to give you know, the bulls the benefit of the doubt. So far, in the analysis. Looking here, with Finvis, we do have we have sliced through this uh, support here. Uh, I'm a huge fan, of course, looking at the analyst price targets. And there's quite a few covering the stock. And they suggest a 31% upside. That's bullish. Sax.com, they have a number three hold, uh, but they have a C value score and C growth, a momentum. There is no dividend, four billion ish um, dollar market cap. It's interesting, very, very interesting. So, to sum up my take here on iTron, looking at the theme smart cities, I have a, it's very difficult to become bearish on that theme. Uh, there's a lot of money just flowing into those uh, companies. As a matter of fact, there's actually mandates now that, you know, ESG mandates that you have to actually spend X amount of money uh, if you're a fund manager on those kinds of companies, you know, because it helps your ratings. Uh, so there's that. That's obviously bullish. The technicals were bullish. We did have that nice surgical support from the 100 day moving average which kind of is like the arbiter of whether the bulls or bears are in control um what i didn't like uh, is that when like itron throughout its history it does have huge rallies but also big corrections that means though that if 100 day moving average becomes resistance it could be a good sh shot the seasonality was bullish, uh, the fundamentals were definitively on the bullish side. So taking all the evidence together, there is more reasons to be bullish on iTron going forward than bearish. So looking at the, com at the coming years, I am bullish. Looking at the coming weeks and months, uh, there's more reasons to be bullish than bearish. My, my, what I find a bit annoying is the S&P 500 because Historically, you know, talking about history of a security, it does actually tend to have some some bigger corrections. Look here at the 50-week moving average in green. It is rather common for us to test it, just, just to have a bit of a pullback, a uh, meaningful correction. We haven't done that since the sea plunge. Hence, that's, you know, a bit of a problematic factor because it's all about buying low and selling high. And when you have the major index um, being overextended, and look at look at the Russell, especially look at Russell on the monthly data points. I mean, this is a bubble. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. This is this is you don't you don't get more bubblish than this. So there are some issues in the market, but overall we need to follow the trends and try to be market neutral, such that we can maximize the upside and also to be hedged for the downside.